Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm Matt. And I'm Tyler. <laughs> if you're wondering what we're laughing about, you should join us live every Thursday around 3 <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon. Eastern time, you can look up your own damn workspace, t- workspaces, damn it. Work, your own damn time spaces, time zones, <laughs> that's the word I'm fucking looking for. This is gonna... If you're tuning in, God bless your little heart, because this is going to be a horrendous episode. Maybe not from Tyler's ep- end, but I can't find words. Words are not in my vocabulary, because it's it's horrible. There's only one keyboard. Mm. Keyboard. keyboard por- you know what? That's a new subreddit. Keyboard porn. <laughs> there is mm-hmm. a there is a mechanical. Keyboard. Well, I, I guarantee you it already exists. Mechanical keyboard subreddit does exist, and and it literally is awesome. And I subscribe to it, obviously, because of course I do. Um, where where do you think the fetish came from? <laughs> I mean, you got to spend all that money on a keyboard somehow, yeah. all right? And you don't you don't just start spending it just because well, you get get well, cause dive down the rabbit hole. Normal people buy like a, a twenty dollar Microsoft keyboard from Best Buy and say, "Oh, this is pretty good. It has letters on it and buttons. It works." <laughs> Me, no. <laughs> <laughs> that thing definitely has a keylogger in it. I'm just saying, if you didn't build it yourself, Matt set- gets the Dell keyboard in front of him. He goes, "Ugh, oh, ugh. that thing is so mushy." I've got four hundred dollars. <laughs> Where can I throw it at? <laughs> I mean, is it- uh, you're going to be making fun of me for my keyboard thing. I'm going to be making fun of you for Windows forever. Uh, even though I did tell you to switch back to Windows earlier, <laughs> that did happen. <laughs> yeah, sadly, the, I, I don't think there are any witnesses for that. He did tell me to switch back to Windows. That was before we started streaming, so there are no witnesses. I deny it. All right. <sighs> Anyways, Tyler, what have you been up on uh, in on Linux? The well, fuck's sake. What, what, <laughs> <laughs> so what I've been up to in Linux. <laughs> I have been, um, well, obviously using Fedora 35, if you've been keeping up with my channel, um, I've, I've had a myriad of issues with Linux. Um, I went over to Windows 11, um, for one, because I hadn't really checked out Windows 11. So I was talking mad shit about it, but, you know, I hadn't actually tried to use, use it, um, other than installing and crapping on it in a VM, but that's besides the point. So I actually gave it a shot. It, I updated the BIOS, uh, of course, with laptops, typically from like Dell and stuff. If you're going to update firmware, all that stuff, it has to be done through tools and windows, which is awesome. Thank you, Dell. Um, but I updated the BIOS, did all that stuff and, and everything was working fine in windows except for the fact that my microphone removed my soul and well obs was pretty much broken on windows um so i i hadn't tried out fedora went back to uh fedora fedora fixed or i hadn't tried out fedora on this laptop but i tried out the live environment and everything worked just like on windows um my microphone was fixed however even though everything is working even better than on a windows here, I still am looking forward to getting away from Gnome. Um, and I'm probably going to try after doing all of the BIOS updates and firmware flashing. I'm going to see if other Linux distros are now working as they should, um, on the laptop. And now this is not something I put in my show notes, but it does need to be addressed. Discord on Linux is terrible. It is terrible. Like Discord on Windows is still not g- great. Discord's just kind of shit in general. But the quality of Discord compared to Windows uh, to Linux is t- Linux gets the shit into the stick. On Fedora here, Discord is my most unreliable program. This thing will. It will, it, it has memory leak, which, uh, apparently has gotten fixed. It stopped doing that, but now it still acts up like crazy. Discord, I'm trying not to want to leave it because I know there just aren't really better options. Yeah. We but. tried, we tried, what did, what was that? We tried element that one time. Was that, mm-hmm. yeah, that was, I still wonder what the dialer was for. <laughs> yeah, like random there. dialer in, in in your application. Like I want to know what it's for. Uh, elementary or not elementary? Good lord, man. 
um, words, fucking words, man. Uh, Discord mm-hmm. is an L- an electron app. That was the correlation between elementary and electron. Is the, they had the same letters in the fucking word. Apparently, that's mm-hmm. the way we're gonna go there. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, Discord's an electron app, so that's probably why it sucks um so bad. I don't know if it's an electron app on Windows though. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, you gotta remember, I haven't used Windows but one time, probably in the last three years. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, you, you tried Windows to be fair, uh, and and honest about your uh, experience with it. I don't care. I'll bitch about it without using it. Just the way it well, I mean, it's not like it's perfect. It's definitely got problems, but yeah. <sighs> what, what what computer doesn't have problems? Let's be real. We should just not use computers anymore, dude. And we'd probably dude, be so, there you go. so much happier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that we should just all get iPhones, or we don't have to worry about file systems or audio there systems. Go. There we go, right there. We should all just be having an iCloud account and uh-huh. reveling in it. That's, that's what should happen. I still can't believe I have an iCloud. I, I, I still can't believe you got bullied into buying iCloud. That's well, hilarious to me. I have pictures on my phone, and in order to back them up, you either back them up to Google or you back them up to Apple, and I... The stupid thing's fucking thing is I pay both of them. So, <laughs> but because I have so much email in my G- in my Gmail inbox that I went over the fifteen gigabytes that they give you for free, so I had to buy the more more space. Um, yeah. Dog, just delete your emails. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, like I I I have receipts for things like the I mean in I I don't know I have probably like. Thirty or forty thousand emails, all saved. And the funny thing is, I actually have them all downloaded to my computer now because I use Neomut. So, uh. okay, but let's talk about this. So, the receipt for the game that you purchased on Steam. When are you going to need that? I don't know, but I kept it. You never know. That, but that's my point. Like, like hey, you is- know what? They're all in really nice organized folders, so I know where everything is at. Um, but I do have a lot of stuff, so it'd be like having, it's like having a, a very organized hoarder, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and that's my point. Like, like you're, I'm you're a hoarding hoarder, emails. But I, I'm a digital hoarder. Like I keep everything. Like you should see like every single graphic that I make, like for the channel and for the blog that I ran years ago, like probably. All right. So. When I first started podcasting, it was the it was uh I had aspirations. Got to remember, I was in college, so I was like like I had dreams mm-hmm. back then. It was before you realized that your dreams never gonna come true. So mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like, it was like back then before student loan debt beside was crippling. Like it was all all that stuff was in the future. It was all it was a huna matata times, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, I had a dream of ha- of of running my own tech blog because everybody who was into technology wanted to start their own tech blog. So mm-hmm. I did. And uh, that that's how I got into podcasting because I was promoting my, uh, my, my stupid fucking st- I started off as, I mean, <laughs> seriously, I, I was just as bad at naming things back then as I am now. So <laughs> I came up with a stupid name, which I'm not even going to repeat. Um, and uh, somebody actually read that stuff. And that was Ricky and we came, became friends and started our own technology podcast, which we did every week. And, and he and I, and then Vince came in a, like a half a year later. We've been podcasting ever since. Um, and I don't know how I started off and on to this conversation. Because <laughs> you have all of that stuff saved. Oh, I, yeah. That's where it came from. It was like, I have all that stuff saved. So I, like we went through like four or five or six different tech blogs because I haven't, I haven't done it with this, like this podcast. But I loved mm-hmm. changing the name of that podcast. Like we started off as T three K D weekly, and then we just changed it to T three K D, and then it was the Untitled Show, and then it was Not Safe for Work, and then it was the Three Cast, and then we went back to something else, and then we finished. I changed the name a lot. Please tell me you didn't spend a minute wondering why not a lot of people watched it. The <laughs> Untitled Show. How is someone going to find that in Google? I thought it was a fantastic name. It didn't last but three episodes, okay, man? It was all right. Um, it's a three cast now. We stuck. I've I've been with that now for six years. I haven't changed that name. I've been good. But the, the point is, every single time we made a tech, uh, like a blog to go along with the podcast, uh, we had like 
dozens and dozens of posts and stuff like that. So I saved all that those pictures. So I have all those pictures on an external hard drive. It's like 70 or 80 gigabytes of that stuff. Like I have pictures of like uh, when Steve Jobs died. I have his like <laughs> a picture of the website. <laughs> like I, it's hilarious. Like, I'm it's a okay to let go. It's okay to let go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I'm keep... that awkward laugh no it's not no, i'm keeping all that man it's 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 some someday you never know i might need a picture and it won't be on google it won't be going google images or see, something see here's what's gonna happen is like in in like 25 35 years like your kids are gonna start going through your hard drives and they're gonna be like like it, it it's gonna be one of those things where they don't just judge you they go why why they're finding all of these old podcasts. Like, oh, God, I'm gonna we have to go I'm, through all I, of it. Like, I'm going to stop you right there because God forbid that I ever reproduce. <laughs> I, 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 those poor, poor little children in the future, like, <laughs> like they have much bigger problems than going through my hard drive with all my technology pictures and shit. Like, like they, like those. <laughs> <laughs> God. I, I can pretty much agree if I got kids I got bigger problems than going through my shit <laughs> I, 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 Tyler we have been recording now for 16 minutes <laughs> this, this <laughs> podcast is the, it, it, just think you haven't even gotten to what you've done this I, week in Linux. The, 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 the hilarious thing is it was supposed to be next week where we didn't have a, a, a topic where we we're just going to bullshit for an hour <laughs> that's going to be <laughs> this podcast here <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I, I need to get started. I need to get going. All right, so what I've done this week in, this week in Linux, uh, good Lord, man, I can't take a deep breath. It's going to be all right. You can come up with words. <laughs> so I've been, so for you, to, for all of you guys that don't know, I write words for a living. You wouldn't know it from the way I talk because I can't talk <laughs> worth a damn. Uh, but I... <laughs> Uh, I write words for I, I edit a historical magazine and I, I still do quite a few writing articles and stuff for it as well. So I write between probably 30 and 70,000 words a week. Um, it's a lot. And there's a reason why I hated that keyboard with blues, Tyler, because those the actuation force on it was so heavy. Writing that many words, it just hurt my fingers. I didn't yeah, have, it made I, you feel strong. Yeah. Well, no, it didn't make Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. it made me feel weak <laughs> is what it did. So, um, uh, so if I'd stuck with it, I'm, I'm sure I would have built up the muscles. But I, I, I'm so used to using reds, which have a l much lower actuation force. But anyways, um, so I mean, I like I write a lot. But most of that work has always been in either Google Docs, which is where the company that I work for uses Google Docs extensively. Just shoot me now um i mm -hmm. can't stand google docs they're so bad so what I, I about maybe two years ago or so i got into just writing everything in LibreOffice and literally copying and pasting it over into google docs once i was done um <laughs> and uh, so uh about a week ago maybe five days ago or so i decided you know, if i'm gonna go through the trouble of just copying and pasting or uploading or whatever i've been doing I'm going to, and I don't like LibreOffice either. Like, it, I don't really care for it at all. It's, it's better than Google Docs, but it's not very good. It's still bloated yeah. as fuck. Um, what I decided I do, was going to do is just write everything in Vim in Markdown. Because I, I learned Markdown in college. Uh, and I just, I've decided I was going to go through and do that. And, uh, man, it has been so much fun. It, it <laughs> It's made my <laughs> writing so much more entertaining because I love Vim so much. And it's just like, maybe it's just because it strokes my nerd, you know, gland or something. It just makes me feel mm -hmm. like, a, you know, like it's, that nerd gland. Yeah, I'm sure I have one. Uh, uh, I'm going to pass that on to my children, too, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're talking like a reptile portion of your brain. Yeah, well, it's like definitely my, something part my... of my brain. I don't know what, what it's going to be. But um, a anyways, I've been having so much fun doing that. And um yeah, and then I've been just been. You'll see later when I do my pick of the week, but th there's some Vim plugins that really do a lot of good stuff for Markdown stuff. So, um, yeah, that's been a lot of a lot of fun. Uh, whether or not it will continue, uh, once I get used to it, probably won't. I probably won't still be having a stupid smile on my face every time I'm sitting there writing. But <laughs> um, 
I, like I, for the first time in a long time, I've actually been having a good time writing again. So and that's just because of him. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, especially since that's what you do for a, for a job. If you enjoy what you're doing for a job, well, you're not really the, okay. So there's a reason why I took the editor's job. Like I moved away because I used to be a writer full time, and then I was writing probably closer to a hundred thousand words a week. And um, granted, a lot of that was rewriting and stuff like that because you always you you know you send in a first draft, it goes to an editor, they go through and do their markdown shit on it, and they send it back to you, and you got to rewrite it. Um, so I decided to take that job because I got sick of them telling me what to do, but most but, but also because I, I was just kind of sick of writing the same listicle over and over again. Cause there's only, only so many times you can write top 10 generals that played a part in the civil war, you know, like, like yep. because you have to deal with fucking Google SEO and all that shit. So I was just kind of sick of that. So it's kind of, it's been kind of nice doing the editing portion of that. Um, and it's, it's also nice that I can kind of mix them together. Um, cause it, you know, variety is the spice of life. You know, Vi- I mean, Vim is better. Like, let's just be real. Vim is, oh, Vim is, Vim is the best. Vim is so good. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You fools that use Emacs, I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm so sorry. I'm just, sorry, kid- I'm like... just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. I just want to... I, I just, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not. Emacs is bad. I'll just say it. Emacs like, is not a text editor. The, 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 troll, the troll gland, which is right next to the, the nerd gland, <laughs> decided to toss uh-huh. that out there. <laughs> God, <laughs> this is horrible. I just, I just take too much enjoyment out of calling Emacs not a text editor because it just really gets people started. It's a game engine, obviously. It's just what it is. It's a game exactly. engine. Like a ha- if you come with games pre-installed, you can't call yourself a text editor. <laughs> Sorry. You can just... mm-hmm. All right. Um, anyways, uh, that now that we've pissed off an entire portion of our community, we should just move on. Now, shall we? <laughs> if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux Cast on Twitter. You can subscribe to all of our audio news feeds and stuff like that at the LinuxCast.org. You can contact us via email at email at the LinuxCast.org. You can su- support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I will do the call out for all of our patrons at the end of the show. And I did remember to get the Patreon seen up in OBS this time. It only took three fucking weeks. Uh, you can subscribe to Tyler, who is on both Odyssey you- and YouTube uh, and various things. Now, Tyler, you went over a thousand subscribers now. Have you set up a vanity URL so that I can actually read out your your, your, your URL yet? Not yet, no. You need to do that. Seriously, man, what's wrong Wait, with you? Wait, uh, actually, I think I already have one. It should be slash C slash uh, capital Z any uh, zany OG with a capital zero or O and a capital G. Well, we're going to find it right now. Do.com slash uh, Z A N Y. Well, it's slash C for channel and then slash zany. Yeah, you don't actually have to have the C. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, that then actually that. works. So you can follow zany at youtube.com slash zany OG. Um, that's awesome. I'll make sure I put that because that way we can get rid of, at least, w- rid of one of those bitly things there in the, in the thing. Uh, you should definitely subscribe to him. All of his stuff is awesome. You've been doing a lot of gaming stuff lately, so that's good if you're into gaming because you'll never see gaming shit on my channel. I hardly ever. Uh-huh. Um, anyways, you can also subscribe to the LinuxCast at YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. And uh, we're getting very close. Very close, my friends, to 7,000 subscribers. <laughs> we Like, I don't even know what... I mean, thanks, everybody. Seriously, I don't... Uh, every Like, every subscriber I get, I'm like... I, 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 I want to meet this person. Like, why are you subscribing, man? There's like... Mr. Beast is right over there. <laughs> like, I'm not going to give you any money. <laughs> like, I can't give you... I have no money to give away. Why are you subscribing? But anyways, thank you for subscribing. Uh, did you watch that Mr. Beast... Um... Um... What was it? The the Squid Game. Squid Game? No. You, you should watch it. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I had no I, I had no clue what Squid Game actually was, but I watched it and it was cool. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, then I, I then I had to look it up. I was like, ah, it's like a Netflix next Netflix thing. Um, it was like <laughs> live anime or <laughs> like it reminded me a lot of anime because of the the subtitles. No. Right. Well, it's yeah, it's a Japanese TV show, and it's literally been made for pretty much every single country in every single language like almost every major language it's been translated into like it's, we'll, we'll give you money but only one person gets money we're gonna kill the rest of you and all the you i mean just decide you're gonna stay here I mean, <laughs> dude, it's a it's a really good show um it's a it's a fantastic show um but with that being said uh mr beast on the other hand 
doesn't have any Linux content, which is very unfortunate. That, you know, you know? I mean, can you can you imagine? I mean, like we we have Mudahar. He's like the 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 king of promoting Linux content because he has like two million, or th- oh, wait, three million subscribers now. Uh, if we mm-hmm. could get one that had like ten million subscribers that actually knew how to use Linux, because mm-hmm. obviously Linus Tech Tips does not know how to use Linux, I was like, click on the fucking font, uh-uh. man. click on the font. <laughs> yeah. Or poor, poor Luke just thinking the font's name is literally a font. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's obviously trolling something, buddy. Yeah, I understand. That's it was bad. Okay. <laughs> we get it. We get it, buddy. <laughs> All right. So Golosek in the in the chat says, "Wait, there's no money." <laughs> <laughs> no <money>. <laughs> <laughs> sorry man i spent it all on the keyboard i'm sorry <laughs> i was told there Look, be- he, has to, he, he hasn't started stealing from his family yet to feed his keyboard addiction okay <laughs> soon, soon though soon. <laughs> but that's not too far off so he definitely doesn't have money to give away like i'm gonna be living homeless in a box but i'll have the keyboard <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> He'll have the finest keyboard around. Yeah, that's gonna be great. It's gonna keep me warm at night. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Just uh, people are walking by a cardboard box, and all they hear is just a thocky keyboard just going, and just like tears, and it's just you sat like crying, but you're just t- tapping on your nice keyboard, l- l- like Homer Simpson. Oh. <laughs> 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 workspace two, workspace three, workspace four. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just imagining someone walking by and seeing you, like, like talking to yourself as you're setting up like key bindings, but the keyboard's not hooked up to a key, like to an actual computer at all. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I don't have the keyboard. I had to sell it. I, I, I can't. I don't have the c- computer anymore because I had to sell it to get a new keyboard. <laughs> 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 You're like, but it was so worth it, though. Oh, but did you hear the fuck, man? Did you hear the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Remix wants to know what's so funny. You're going to have to rewind because we can't re- we can't recreate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Every single week, Tyler and I scour the internet, and uh, oftentimes we come up with news articles that are actually thought-provoking and discussion-enticing this week. Um, well, we'll see. Uh, we'll, see yeah, how it goes. we'll see. Given that I read mine like five minutes before we started recording, uh, <laughs> that's a true story. Anyways, uh, so the first one, uh, Tyler, why don't you tell us what your uh, news link of the week is? So mine is uh, so there is Zorn OS sixteen Lite. Um, I didn't know that this was like I didn't know that Zorn OS had a light variant of it. Uh, I don't know how long they've had it or what i just i didn't know this existed but uh apparently what it is was the free version oh i didn't they still do the paid thing i thought they stopped that a long time ago they still do the paid thing yeah had no idea well okay well the free edition is kind of kind of nice because it's xfce so it's pretty lightweight and fast and if you're looking at the article here, Zorn OS has made XFCE look really nice. Yeah. I mean, really nice. I also took Gnome and made it really nice too. So in, mm-hmm. in their in their other ver- they have another free version. It's just like just regular Zorn OS, I think. And then they have Zorn Pro, which is the paid version. Uh but the one that is I believe it's Gnome anyways, is really good looking too. Um yeah. Uh, I, I very much like their their look. Um, so yeah, if you're into XFCE, consider giving Zorn OS a look. Are you um is this is Zorn OS like you're gonna be your next distro? Highly doubt it. So it's highly doubt so it. So it's uh it, it looks good, but it looks good for other people. <laughs> well, I'm not huge on XFCE. Um I've I I've, I've never had a problem with it. I've just never been very attracted to it. It, this does make XFC look very good. However, I don't need to be burning out my eyeballs with even more white. They have a dark mode. That's, yeah, but even even in the even so XFC, good. they have a dark mode. It looks really good. F- fine, you know what? I'll give Zorn OS sixteen light a try. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. And I can't touch into it. The funny thing is, I don't even like Soren West. I made you try it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care for them, um, the way they sell their stuff. But um, wrong, wrong. You know, so I might try it out and then become a shill for them. You should definitely. Then, then you might not like me either. No, that's not true. I'd always like you, Tyler. You, that's that's so untrue. I come in here with windows and all the friendship, <laughs> all of the respect is all lost. Well, I, no, 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 no. I said I like you. I never said I respected you. I mean, there's two, there's two, there's two different things. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Actually, that's the. If we did name titles for that, it was like, I like you, but I don't respect you. <laughs> that's so good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just warms my heart to know that I can make these jokes and not <laughs> make you like, like anybody else would be just pissed off, right? Like, well, fuck no. you then, man. Well, fuck you very much, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like Tyler knows I'm joking. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I don't think we ever, like, I don't think we've ever had a miscommunication where we thought the other one was ever talking bad about. Them. The other, I don't think that's ever happened. Other than there have been times where I've, you know, completely neglected you, and that's well. Kind of I mean, a you have a you zero know, AD left addiction. Your <laughs> that's a good point. At least your zero AD addiction is cheaper than my keyboard addiction. <laughs> of course, of course, you're. Like, we're talking about addictions. Of course, that has to come off. <laughs> of course, yes. it does. Um, yes. All right, I do very much like zero AD. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are, it's great. There are worse addictions, I suppose. All right, so my t- my um. <laughs> news of the week is that uh, uh game buntu is a thing uh, first of all great name game, Bun- game buntu good name but anyways it is basically a tool that you can install I, i'm assuming well, it's probably ubuntu specific given that it's using app and stuff but it will go through and install pretty much everything you'll need to be a a, a game streamer so it'll install steam it'll install obs it'll install lutris pulse effects wine uh in the hero game launcher uh the only thing i wish it would install would be uh like proton ge like i wish it install proton ge because installing proton ge is i mean it's easy but it doesn't use a package manager it uses you know, you'd have to download from git and build it and the wine dependency hell thing is what gets a lot of people yeah so if it, a if, lot of, a lot of people don't follow if that. it did that it also goes through and it switches the linux kernel to the real-time xan mod kernel which i've absolutely never heard of before I've heard of Zen. I, I've I, I've heard of it. I've never actually read about it. Heard anyone talk about it? Like, I, yeah, I've heard it in in like passing, but never heard anyone say anything good about it. Yeah, I never heard of heard of it before. So I mean, that's going to be something that you, I mean, messing with somebody's kernel from from an application sounds a little sketchy to me. Like, like uh, I wish it was optional. Like maybe maybe it is optional. I don't know. I don't know. Um. But also go through and update all your dra- graphics drivers. It will install the Noise Torch uh, real-time microphone noise cancellation suppre- no- noise suppression app, and will enable click to mi- minimize in GNOME. And all in- also installs VLC, Encoding Media Center, and Mango HUD, all with one click. So, uh, if you're a gamer and you don't mind the messing around with your kernel, uh, this sounds like a actually a pretty good thing. Um, now it's a lot of things. It it's, looks like it's going to scare some people away because it does open the terminal like in the background, uh, but you don't actually have to interact with it. But it sounds really cool. Uh, d- definitely, if you're using Ubuntu and don't want to have to go through and install each one of these things, you know, piece Mainly, by piece. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a really good option, and it's also <laughs> it's also available as an app image in Snap. So win, I guess. The app image, not the snap part. <laughs> right, I guess. All right. <laughs> yeah. We don't. We already talked about that. We don't need to get into it anymore. Mm-hmm. All right. So, for those of you who are watching live, you probably looked at the the title and said, "Well, what's the main topic for this podcast?" And the the the, the main topic is should distros charge for Linux? And we didn't use that as the main title because every time we use uh, anything regarding paying for Linux in the title, it just absolutely flops. So we, we're cheating. Uh, we're big, lying cheaters who cheat. Um, but what can you do? So the main topic is, well, I mean, technically it was, 
I don't remember how you phrased it. I rephrased it for you. Um, well, the 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 way that I wrote it was, should you pay for Linux? Mm. So they're basically the same thing, right? Um, yeah. So should distros charge you when you nano is a snap? Crazy chicken. Why you must you be so crazy? <laughs> like, sorry, it's disgusting. Like, seriously, why don't you and Dylan just go over there and have your good times together? It's all right. <laughs> you just both use your nanos and control X to get out of it. You know, <laughs> right? Gross. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, <laughs> so Tyler, take it away, would you? Yeah. So when it comes to paying. For for Linux, I feel like you shouldn't necessarily be charged up front out of the gate. A guaranteed, like, you know, 10 bucks gets you this Linux distro. However, I feel like you should at at a- almost at every level uh, for every Linux distro monetize it in some way other than donations. Like, Are you talking about like whether you're making... Purchases? maybe but i feel like a better way of doing it would would, would probably probably be that there is software like first party software made by your distribution that integrates and does a lot with the distribution it um you know it it sells itself make some piece of FOSS software and sell it where it integrates into the system uh very well um, of course, people would would go around that and get it for free. Um, but the kind of advantage there is at least you have a selling point for support. Like paying for support is it, it's kind of irrelevant on most Linux distributions. Mm-hmm. Like the Zorn OS Pro. Like I don't know why in the fuck I'd pay for that. Like why? Like what what support are you going to give me that the community won't? Like. Right. Calling and calling and messaging someone at Zor at Zorn OS is the same fucking thing as me texting or messaging someone on my Discord or Reddit. You know, like it's the it's the same thing. Um. So I mean, if you're gonna try and make money providing support, the best way of doing that is having your own first party applications that are kind of the method for, um, making it enticing to get support because if you're if you're someone who really loves a linux distro and like let's just say for example um mx linux if they have you know two or three first party apps that are really great um you might end up paying the support just to make sure that those three apps always you, you can always get direct support on those specific things um that's kind kind of my view on it it's kind of how you should make money um selling your distro instead of selling the distro sell the support and first party apps that make the distro great might just be me there all right so i have many thoughts about mon- the monetization so uh i don't care for the idea of charging for a distro up front um mainly because maybe if that's the way we'd always done it um it would be fine but the biggest problem with monetizing any piece of software is that everybody uses a different payment processing system. So some people use PayPal, some people use Google, some people use Amazon, some people do it themselves, whatever. And I would give to so many more open source projects if their payment processing system was good. Like half, like I, I tried to give money to Xmonad when DT did his video saying that Xmonad was wanting, was needing, needing money for support. I was like, well, you know what? I have ten dollars. I'll give them ten dollars, but I couldn't give them ten dollars because it wouldn't go through. And I've experienced that audio is bad for Matt. I hate to tell you this. You but sound fine to me. That's because it's coming from your end, bro. Mm. There's like a like a somebody running a dryer in the background or something. Oh. Um. Anyways, yeah, it's not me. I can, and the reason why I know that is because the OBS meters. Go. Well, it stopped now. It's, I don't know. Who the hell knows? Audio sucks on Linux. I mean, seriously. Uh, but mm-hmm. <laughs> anyways, um, where was I? Yeah. I, uh, I okay. Apparently, everyone's saying that there's a lot of noise on your side. 
Yeah, it only comes, though, when you're talking. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it, that's because my laptop is not compiling a kernel, but yes, it is essentially taking off right now. <laughs> so it's the fan that we're hearing, okay? It's, 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 his, it's, his, no. it's the fan, guys. It's all right. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, I can only cut it out in post. <laughs> we'll, we'll get rid of it later. Uh, anyways, um, I have no clue what I was talking about now. Um. <laughs> Oh, he lost my ticket. I am so sorry. Thank you, chat. We appreciate it. Good job, guys. Don't blame the chat. Oh, uh, you, you, I mean, so you were talking about um, uh, paying in Linux and... Um, oh, processing. I, like I, yeah, yeah, I give to so many more FOSS projects if there was like a single place to do so. Like, every single FOSS project should have Patreon. Like, seriously, every single one. And I'd give to so many more. Like, I give to OBS... Like it's only two dollars a month, but I give them two dollars a month. Um, uh, there's a there's a new uh, YouTube channel that I've been watching called uh, BuzzFeed's eBuzz Central Buzz Central something. It's a Linux guy, um, about two thousand subscribers. I tossed him five bucks a month. Um, I did Linux mm-hmm. Scoop five bucks for a couple months. You know because they're on Patreon and, and guess what? Patreon's really freaking easy. I just go through there and subscribe. You know, it has, they have my credit card. So if, if you are a, a, a FOSS offer, use, use PayPal or not PayPal, but Patreon, I'm there, you know, and maybe that's just yeah. me, but I think that a lot of people are like that. If you use a service, a lot of people use and make it easy, they'll give it. The, the, the problem becomes, I don't like, I don't like the feeling of saying, like elementary S does this, like they say, here's here are the monetary donations, and you have to manually feel in zero. It makes me feel like they're guilting me. You know, like I feel guilty mm-hmm. changing that to zero. Um, and I think that that's their point. Is like, like oh, really, really, you can't give like a couple dollars for this. Thanks a lot, you cheap bastard. You know, it's like well, there's somebody somebody back there talking. Well, I understand that mindset, but also at the same time, would you even notice that you weren't giving them money if you didn't manually have to change it to zero? I'm, there's something about one about FOSS stuff that makes me want all of the money that I give to be completely voluntary, and maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. Well, yeah, because I mean, like, th- think about it like this: you love DWM. The only reason you even consider giving uh, Suckless any money is because of your experience with try uh, uh, of being reminded to go and give X Monad some support. Yeah, like you. I mean, you wouldn't even think about it. Well, like, until today, I didn't even know Suckless had a donation page. Like I didn't even exactly. Know. Um, yeah, so no one's going to go out of their way to check. So pretty much the only way that you can mm. get someone to even notice the fact that, like, hey, you can support this, like, it's an option, you know, is to sadly make them feel like shit, okay. like, because they have to manually enter it in. Yeah, we know the sounds is bad. It's, he, he can't, I mean, he could start blowing on his his laptop and see if it will cool down but i don't think that's gonna work <laughs> i've lifted it up and so hopefully the fan fans will spin down here in a second um, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll work on it it's all right it's gonna be good he'll he'll get like a actual cooler attached to the bottom of it or something <laughs> matt give your keyboard <laughs> <laughs> no you can't have my keyboard my keyboard doesn't have a fan in it okay it's not making any sounds <laughs> not yet the new one will. Uh, I was watching somebody on YouTube. They built a mechanical keyboard. They took a like a, a key current keyboard, and then they three three mm-hmm. D printed something underneath it, and put in one of those Intel nooks right underneath it. Like, oh, oh, like dude, I want that so much. I mean, granted, it puts you, it was like two inch, two or three inches thick, so your keyboard would be quite a bit higher than normal. So you'd have to have wrist wrist rest. But yep. um, man, that is, that just sounds so. But then you, and look, man, it would only cost you like four or five hundred dollars. <laughs> just just go ahead and do it. It's nothing in the world of keyboards. Pocket change, brother. Yeah, pocket change. <laughs> We've totally gotten off track again. <laughs> uh, I blame the chat. <laughs> Definitely blaming the chat. <laughs> the, the, this is the, the the problem with doing things live. You always get distracted with the, with the, whatever they're talking in the in the chat. It wasn't the chat's fault. It was all my fault. Um, but anyways, the I don't know. We, we we've talked about monetizing 
you know, floss stuff before. And there just doesn't seem to be a good solution because you're, you can't just say, you just can't outright, you can't just outright charge for things and not yeah. expect to lose a good portion of your audience because a, a lot of people just won't pay for software these days. Um, but I, I think that the thing is, is I think that, so let's just take the elementary app center and let's just assume it was good and had a lot of software in it. That's a big assumption mm -hmm. and it's not true, a true assumption, but let's just, let's just go there and let's just say, because what, I, what I'm trying to come up with is a correlation between them and like the Apple app store. People buy stuff off the Apple app store all the time, but you want to know why mm -hmm. they buy stuff off the Apple, the iPhone app store is because it's easy. Like it's literally, I go in there, I find an application I want and see that it's, oh, it's 99 cents. I double click the home button. I've bought it. You know, they have mm -hmm. my credit card information. I trust Apple not to lose my credit card information. Maybe I shouldn't, but you know, whatever. Um, I trust them more than I trust, a, a, you know, a, a small Linux distribution. Um, it, no matter how trustworthy the small Linux distribution is, you know, I, that's why I keep coming back to, you have to, don't charge up front, but make it easy and still, you know, uh, like an, if you're right in the in the DWM thing, I wouldn't have even thought to check on it if we hadn't been talking about it today. But that's because it's not in, in like in my face. So they need to have some way, like a mailing list or a button on the front of their website or something. Yeah, but a mailing list is not in your face. No, no, but and it's you'll more. Never see it. It's more in your face than what it, it'd be right now. You'd still reach more people than hiding it nine links down on your website. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Put put a big gigantic donation. Wikipedia does this all the time. Whenever they're on like a, a funding drive or whatever, they have a big pop up on the front of their on every single article that says, "Hey, we're, we need money." You know, mm -hmm. do something. Or just like you know the 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 place on the website where you know people are going to go. Like I don't know, like the Git clone link for DWM. Put it there. Yeah, kind of makes sense. And like I said, that that's one part of it. But also, you have to make it easy, like. So, so, some someone was making fun of that you would you spent four hundred dollars on a keyboard but you won't give money to a to DWM. Well, that, first of all, that, that's not true. <laughs> like I would give money to DWM, but it has to be easy. You know, I mean, it's like I like I'm a busy guy. I'm too busy hugging my keyboards in order to, to do this. So if you're gonna get me to do this, it has to be something that is easy. That's why Patreon is so good because literally when I find someone I want to support, if they're on Patreon, I go to Patreon. I select the level I want to support them. I'm like Zany. I give him money every week or every every month, you know, and it's much appreciated. I, I think I was your first patron, man. I think I you were. I, so, mm -hmm. so, you know, you know, Tyler's like, thanks a lot for your four measly dollars a month, man. <laughs> hey, it's the first four dollars I got. It means a lot. You know, it, as, as it should, like only like 20% of it goes back to Patreon. But, <laughs> mm -hmm. but the, the, the point is, is that I, when I see that it's easy. And I keep coming back to that. It has to be easy. It can't. And PayPal, everybody's like mentioned, well, you know, PayPal is easy. PayPal is not easy for everyone. First of all, not everyone has PayPal. Second of all, you have to. Granted, it's the same thing. Not everyone has Patreon. So that's that's the biggest problem. What service do you use to make it easy for everyone? as many as you can? Like, so hold on. So here's kind of the the stupid idea. So I am trying to make videos. I spend an egregious amount of time. I've spent time talking with the people around me about this. I spend an exorbitant amount of time live streaming, making videos, uh, creating thumbnails, doing all this stuff. It makes no sense for me to feel like any, the whole point of trying to support yourself if you spend a large portion of your time doing something like making a Linux distro, running a FOSS project, whatever, the whole goal should be able to support yourself while you spend most of your time working on that thing. The whole idea of I need to pick one thing and that's where everyone's going to find me, that's a self-defeating like defeating mindset. You, you have to spread your eggs out over multiple baskets. So any project should be doing Patreon, should be accepting PayPal, should be accepting uh, Payoneer or Stripe, whatever. You should have as, yeah. yeah, like I mean, you should you should have as many revenue streams as possible coming into your project or your 
your whatever you're doing for your time. You should have as many revenue streams as possible. Uh, and I think that's a big problem. Like, I, I don't know. I think that's the biggest problem that kind of is being highlighted. We don't really need um, a different method of charging people for stuff. We just need projects to actually, like... <laughs> try to make money yeah, you like can't, that's really you what can't it is. be a FOSS project and have your only method of being donated to be GitHub payments because you want to know what yeah no oh, very few people have their credit cards attached to GitHub and that you know so you're not going to get very many people you're exactly right it has to be multiple things and yes the only reason I'm making money off of YouTube is I haven't made a damn thing off of YouTube ads yet. Now that I've just hit a thousand subscribers, I, that's a possibility. But I've started. Uh, I, I've made us merch. I, I, I'm doing Patreon. I've got a Libra Pay, although I don't think anyone really uses it. I, People I, can donate crypto to me. I, I also do Odyssey, so I've got multiple different revenue streams, and that's the only reason I've ever made any money off of mm-hmm. all the time that I spend doing this. You, you mentioned your Libra your Libra Pay. I've had it for several months and not a single soul. I don't think everybody's ever clicked on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't even know if it's set up right. Like nobody's ever, like I'm assuming it's- the one, the one person I've ever tried to donate through Li- Li- Libra pay to didn't have it set up. So like I never end up, ended up even giving them money, yeah. which was kind of sad. But like, like I have a link and I think I set it up right, but it, no, nobody's ever tested it. So I have no clue. Um, then it's always seemed patreon just seems a little bit easier so that seems to draw the people um surprisingly enough i thought that when i managed to enable the youtube subscribe join button thing that you get after like a certain amount of subscribers i thought that would be more popular but it really hasn't um Mm -hmm. you know i just figured well i mean everybody has a lot of people have given google their credit card so you know i figured that people would hit the join button because it's just you know a couple clicks but it hasn't that patreon's still much more popular um, no. But again, it's all like you have all those things. Like the only thing I don't do is the crypto thing because I'm not smart enough to do crypto. So uh, well, it's a hassle. It, it's really not that you're not smart enough. It's 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 a hassle. You've got to learn a lot. Yeah, um, and I'm, that's. Yeah. I'm sure that I'm gonna I'm I'm losing out my ability to become a, a Bitcoin billionaire by by <laughs> not doing that. But um, I, I always feel. Well, like, I mean, you still like. I mean, you're on Odyssey, so you have a ton of cryptocurrency. You just you're not exchanging it or doing like, anything like with you, it like you say that but i actually only like in the last three weeks got uh added to their view per, their coin per, their lbc per view or whatever where you actually get paid for every view i only just got added to that because they didn't do it for me automatically and i just assumed that i was i needed a certain level apparently i was supposed to be getting it all all along but uh, yeah. uh apparently I, <laughs> I had to email them to get that and to enable that for me so i have like 800 <laughs> Um, well, that ain't that bad. I mean, if you took your like the way it works on Odyssey, it's weird. You got to take your tips and then put it like on supporting your channel, and then all of your videos will instantly start doing better on the platform. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everything. I just like seriously, it's worth like four cents. No. So yeah. I mean, I'm not ever gonna take that. Like maybe if that if that thing goes to the moon, <laughs> you know, I, I will take. I'll. If that goes thing goes to a hundred dollars a coin, I'll I'll sorry and are sorry and man, I'm gonna get all that stuff out. Um, but uh, I don't think that that's ever you know gonna happen. Anyways, that that was beside the point. We should we should do an episode on cryptocurrency. That sh- that could be fun. Um, <laughs> that'd be a topic for next year. Anyways, um, I think is there do we have anything else to say on this topic, Tyler? I don't really know. I mean, re- really, in all honesty, just. Actually, we need Linux projects to just start trying to make money. Yeah, that's, that's I, I, really I think it. that they would be surprised if they open up their options for like, if this if Suckless had a Patreon account, I'd support him through Patreon for sure. I don't think I don't know whether or not I'd do it through PayPal because PayPal never works for me. Like I have a PayPal account, but I think it's frozen for some reason. And the stupid thing about Patreon, it or not Patreon, but PayPal. Is you can't like chat with them through a chat client or whatever. You have to call them like it's the like the nineteen thirties or something like that. Um, and no. for me, it's just literally not worth it. <laughs> like, cause mm-hmm. especially when they haven't given me a reason. Like, why, like, am I under some kind of federal investigation? And the only account they no. froze was PayPal. I mean, <laughs> did they freeze my account? And it, 
<laughs> and it's almost like they have an app where they could send you a notification and tell you what's going on. Yeah, you know, they could. They could Be literally crazy. put so, you know like a account status. All it says was account status frozen. Like, okay, why? Um, I, it's <sighs> dumb. Like, it's fine. Obviously, I, it doesn't matter. But, but anyways, if if they had other options, I would definitely. But I want to talk about th- this before we move on just a little bit. Um, the question is, should you it, should you feel guilty? for not supporting the software that you use? What do you think? Depends. Uh, I, I think it genuinely depends on where you are. If you've been using it for five years and you've got the money to give on them or, or give to them, yes, you should feel guilty for not. Um, although if you're just someone learning, um, you, you know, you're not in a career or, or anything like that and you just need software, then no, I don't think you should feel guilty for it. I mean, like g- genuinely, I I think the real question is 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 do you have the money to give them? Like that's when you if you've got the money to give them, you've been using them for a long time. Then yeah, like the guilt that you're feeling is kind of warranted. Like, but I mean, if you can't afford to pay them, why would you feel guilty about not paying them? Mm. They don't ask for like I mean, they're not demanding money; they're giving it to you. Uh, the whole point is that if you can't pay for it, you can still use it. So, so the way yeah, I, like you shouldn't feel guilty. The way I've been doing it is rotating because, like, there's there's no way I could afford to. I mean, even, I could I could cut down the keyboard. I, I understand, <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, I, I that's not an option. I understand. Right, yeah. it's an addiction for a reason, man. All right, but exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, what, the way I've been doing it is rotating through through like d- developers and creators and stuff that I want to support. So, like one month I'll support Arco, and then the next month I'll support you know, an, another project. So that my level of commitment is always around 50 bucks a month. Um, but different projects, I kind of spread it around a little bit. That's the way I've been trying to do it. Um, I don't always succeed and I'm much more likely to maintain, uh, like a, a, a donation if it's a subscription service through a service I trust, like Patreon. Um, I know yeah. that keeps coming on, uh, by the way, Patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Patreon.com slash what? Zany? The official Zany? Uh, AKA Zany. AKA Zany. You really need to be consistent on your URLs. There, I know. I know. <laughs> well, it, the thing is, is like when you choose a name like Zany. Right. Yeah. You, a lot of those links are taken. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, anyways. Uh, so if you if you don't want to support real developers and real open source projects, you can definitely throw money our way. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, and I mean, Matt also does have some dope merch. Uh, he should be providing the link in the description as well. Uh, I, I believe uh, it is. I actually in, haven't even checked. I believe it is in the live description. I believe it is. Um, oh, I must verify. Yeah, if, if it's not, I'm going to feel... Well, yes, it is. All right, it is. Good, good. good. Oh, sigh of relief. All right, anyways, <laughs> uh, that is it for uh, that the, the main topic. Let's go ahead and move on to the apps of the week, or uh, as we should probably start calling them, the thingies of the week, um, <laughs> although they are actually uh, apps or things this week. They are things. All right, anyways, Tyler, your uh, thingy of the week. Mine is Easy Effects, which is a uh, great little GUI application for um, – like messing with pipe wire and pipe wire applications. Um, so you have like, it, it comes with, uh, if you read the about, it's got a limiter, compressor, convolver, equalizer, and auto volume, and a ton of other plugins um, for messing around with pipe wire and your audio on your system. So if you're someone who likes messing around with audio, you need something to manipulate your audio and uh, you like, you know, GUI applications, this is, definitely a great project to go and check out and uh it's also um like some people would consider this a plus but it's not written in you know python or rust or any of those controversial languages i i love i i I saw a post just commenting about that like just they were talking about a program and they just mention the fact that it's not made in python and rust and all these controversial language like languages and i was like oh my god it's just it's just a program. It works. It does what it's supposed to. That's all that matters. I don't care what it's written in. This looks cool. Now this is like a like a rewrite of the pulse effects, right? But for mm-hmm. pipewire? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's cool. Um I'm not gonna use pipewire just to go try this out. <laughs> oh, I I figured. 
Um, Wait, you're telling me this is not a selling like a selling point for you now? You use Pipewire. Um, the, <laughs> these guys have a Libera a Libera pet. Don't it, a little the the word problem mm -hmm. is coming back, dude. I, like I did a good job in the middle section. I was like fucked up at the beginning. I did okay in the middle, and now all of a sudden my tongue is about the size of a cow. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyways, I don't care. Anyways, um, to mine. Uh, so as I talked about at the beginning. I've been going through and using Markdown a lot in Vim the last week or so as I've been doing all my writing in Vim. And I needed a good way of previewing that to see how it would look on like a website or whatever. So usually you could use something like Pandoc or you could use something like uh, maybe LaTeX or something. I don't, I've never used that before, so I have no clue. Uh, but I wanted to do something that was live, like literally live. And the there's a NeoVim plugin called Markdown Preview for NeoVim. And it will actually go through and it opens up in the browser. like, And you can go through and open up Vim like, right next to it and edit your document. And it will literally scroll right along with you as you go through the, the, the document in Vim and show your changes live. And it is so cool. Um, I'm, I've only just begun to play with it. I only found it yesterday. So, um, But it looks really good. And it's not abandoned. It's... It, Granted, it's been about nine months since their last update, but uh, they still have been going through and uh, updating stuff. So um, a lot of times you come up with, you find a really cool Vim plugin, and wow, that's a really cool Vim plugin. When was the last time it was updated? Oh, 2002. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So I, I saw one that was like 2006, and I'm like, oh, come on, brother. <laughs> like, that sounds on. really cool, but now I can't use it because it probably has security <laughs> holes the size of the Golden Gate Bridge. Um <laughs> Anyways, this is really cool, and I'm going to continue to play with it because I love the idea of having it just live, right, right side by side. It's really cool. Um, there are a lot of like GUI that, applications, like um, Obsidian or whatever, that do this like in a GUI, but this is for mm -hmm. them. So, yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, like if you just watch the 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 um, the GIF the gif or whatever that's on their github page like watching them do that like oh, that's awesome yeah that's the reason why i use markdown anyways so that is my choice all the links for everything we talked about today will be in the show notes or the video description depending on where you're watching this we do record this live every thursday usually we do about 15 minutes of a pre-show where you can usually hear us just I mean, seriously, half the time we start the, the, the show laughing like we did this time because we were just, it was just, it's just a lot of fun. So definitely join us live. You, that way you can join the chat, which we have a lovely time with. Sometimes we do Q and A's with the chat. Sometimes we don't like today. We're not going to, um, just because, uh, it's like, we've already been going for an hour. Um, surprisingly we made it to a whole hour, which is surprising me because it, it just zoomed right on past. It was like a lot of, a lot of fun. Anyways, uh, coming up next week it's going to be a little bit of a weird show because this is our last episode of the year like seriously the year is over people like where did this year go like we so, so the thing is we all thought 2020 was really bad and it was really bad 2021 not eh, so much better you know yes no. we, we got out a little bit more like people went back to work but not Everybody went back to work and everybody decided to quit their jobs and now everything costs 12 times more than it did before and not a great year, but we did oh, we did 36 episodes of the Linux cast this year. We'll have one more to go, so we'll end season five on episode 37. Uh, and the reason why I talk about this being the, the last episode is because next week we have no topic. There is literally yeah. zero topics for next week. We're not doing news. We're not doing picks of the week. All we're doing is bullshitting for an hour. Um, we're not writing anything down. So this is going to be like Tyler's podcast before he started writing stuff down. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be full of tangents. It's going to be great. It's not going to be full of tangent, man. It is going to be a tangent of itself. It is, <laughs> so it's going to be good. Uh, so just prepared for that. If you're interested in the whole structured thing that we normally... Uh, structured thing that we normally do <laughs> uh, that won't be next week so uh just be prepared for that we were I, I was thinking about doing like a trivia game but yeah it's way too much work you know what i mean it, yeah. it's the last episode. let's just have fun it's the last episode of the year we will talk about linux probably it will probably be we'll we'll start off with something linuxy then we'll just go wherever the hell we want to go so that'll be next week last episode of the year after that we'll be taking two weeks off and we'll come back in early january um 
so I think, other than thanking patrons, that's all we have to do. Yes, 2021 was a continuation of 2020, that's for, that's for sure. Um, anyways, uh, so before we go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. And I do have the Patreon slide here, so winning. Like, seriously, Matt, it only <laughs> took you three weeks. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gentoos, Funchu, Patrico, Primus, Sid Marcus, Meglin, Jack Snipe Tools, Steve A, Mitchell, Arch Center, and Mateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, The Beasties, Rock, Peter Ray, and Crucible. Brand new patron. Welcome. That is it. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Thanks, everybody, who subscribed to both of our channels. We both really seriously appreciate every single one of you. And for all of you, Very much. all of you have joined us live today and listened to this utter nonsense. Thank you. We'll see you next week. See ya.